So this is no longer a factory, you know, stock solder. It's one of the small ones. It's actually a quarter horsepower wheel. It has the a remade top. Um, the original top was plywood, and it eventually broke down over use. This was at a college. Um, it was originally a college wheel, so it's had quite a bit of use, and is still a um, pretty decent wheel. The foot pedal goes tremendously fast for the um, actual wheel speed, and we'll talk. About, I'll talk about speed and why it's important later on. The low end speed. Is you can go very slow with a lot of control, I mean that's kind of what solders is, solders are about. Um, they do though bog down. It's easy to stop them from spinning. So for decorating stuff, it's fine. But for the you know if you're trying to do something really slow and you're still putting a lot of pressure on it, it's just going to stop the wheel. Although you can apply more pressure and it goes. So I have, this is the wheel that I usually end up using because um, it's mine, but I really like the, the control over the foot pedal. That's my biggest thing for it. Um, splash pans, it uses a Brent splash pan kind of backwards though. With the splash pan on, the Giffen grip hits, so it's another, um, another one where you got to use this the grip by itself. It's got the same regular bat pins as the all. I think it's six inches on center, 12 inches apart. I think. I would have to measure that to be sure. Um, Solners, I don't have a a warranty information on because this is a used wheel that I've already had. It's cast aluminum and steel. Um, they're adjustable. The legs move up and down so you can level it without having to put stuff underneath it. You can also adjust the height. Um, all the other wheels here are fixed legged so you can't get leg extensions or put boards underneath them. This one has little thumb tighteners that you can um, adjust the wheel head with. Um, they end up being significantly more expensive than other wheels basically because of the foot pedal. Um, repairs on these are difficult as well. Um, the underside is hard to take apart to take the wheel head off or any of the things underneath the wheel. You actually have to remove pins underneath the, or not, what are they not? Pins, they're little compression rings underneath the shaft which I found to be a real pain. I don't have tools for that. Oh, another thing about it, your legs can come off so that if you need to get it in a smaller space for transportation, the legs come off. Also, this is the lightest wheel that we have in the studio. So this is the one I take for workshops, which, you know, is a pretty big difference for me. Okay, so the first wheel is the GT400. This is the one that we have the most of in the studio. It's a economical wheel in terms of price. It, it seems to be rather cheap. The torque tests on it seem to rank up there with the other ones in terms of how well it, uh, you know, how far it pushed. The pedals vary greatly in terms of use. Um, some pedals seem to be stickier for other people. So that they do wear differently, it wheel becomes its own little personality and some people sit at certain wheels and not others. Um, high end wheel speed is, for me, within the range of acceptable. Um, it tends to be a little bit slower than what I really like. The slow speed, um, when you get to it, is okay. Let's go back there. But it's hard to get to. The pedal's a little jerky. When you hold on to it, it continues to apply torque so that your low end speeds are strong. So even though the wheel isn't spinning very fast, it's hard to stop it still, which is one of the good things about, about that. Splash pans are fairly easy to put on. Cleanup is pretty easy as well. There isn't um, a stationary splash pan. 
it's plastic on top. Underneath the plastic is actually an MDF kind of product, a medium density fiberboard. So it's not an all steel construction or an all metal construction, which makes them a little bit lighter than other ones. This one has a reversing switch on it and on and off. The warranty for Pacifica is five years. Um, and I'll post the prices on the sidebar there. The newer Brent um, is the one that had that kind of ghost pedaliness that even after pressing the pedal, it continues to apply torque. And when you, but after you release the wheel head or release that pressure, it still, it still puts um, energy into the wheel. I don't know why they've done that. It's, it seems a little bizarre. Out of all the wheels that I've played with, this one is the quirkiest. Uh, it, I think they've kind of made a mistake with that pressure. Even after you push the pedal back, it still goes. And it's actually popped the circuit twice in the, the uh, power strip that we've used. So that kind of that kind of weirds me out. Um, this is a C, this is a three quarter horsepower wheel, and the power difference wasn't all that much different than the quarter horsepower Soldner or the half horsepower um, Brent C or Brent B. So I mean there's an advantage, I mean there aren't that many advantages to going up in the uh, size part of it. It does have reverse switch and it's got all the other same, you know, attributes in terms of what it's built from and how easy it is to fix compared to the older brand. This is the Pacifica GT800. It's the same as the 400 except it's a little more powerful. Um, we didn't really see that much in the test. I mean the test is, you know, kind of, uh, it's not the perfect test but you get an idea and it didn't apply that much more torque. I'm guessing that it's you know, slightly newer, so the electronics are probably a little better. The pedal might be a little more long-lasting, but I don't know if a step up to the 800 is much worth much more than the 400. But that's my opinion. Um, slow speeds here are hard to get with the pedal again because the pedal's kind of jumpy, a little sticky. But the slowest speed you can get is there, which isn't crawling. I mean, it's but you're not going to be able to stop it again. It's going to pull the wheel around before it lets go. This one does have a reverse switch. It has, you know, the on off and the easily accessible fuse. Um, in terms of taking them apart, I have not taken apart a GT800, but it feels a lot like the 400 where the, the screws and everything are easy to take apart and, you know, replace parts, belts if needed. Other things about the um, Thomas Stewart, it does fit Giffen grips. My wheel is I mean, my Giffen grip isn't set up for the same size wheel. This wheel head is a little bit smaller than the um, Soldner wheel head, so it doesn't quite fit. But it's going to stay on. Unfortunately, it again is taller than the splash pan, so it's not going to catch all the trimmings. But with the side part out here, you're at least going to be able to fit, you know, some of the trimmings into the splash pan. You can always put cardboard around this one to um, get away from or to get away with that. In terms of repair for Thomas Stewart, I, we have yet to have to repair it so I can't give you much information on how easy it is to take apart. Um, I'll flip it over here though so we can look. So it doesn't seem like it would be that bad to take apart. There's a plastic thing over the belt which looks like it comes off easily. And you know all the bolts are pretty accessible for the motor housing. So that's not so bad.